In this video, we will look at somewhat hidden features of ZBrush Core. We will also look at some alternatives to the popular C Modeler and C Remesher tools and how to render ZBrush Core models and much more. In the video description below, you can see a table of content of everything covered in this video. You can carve details into your model with the Radial Symmetry feature. On the Transform menu, you can find the symmetry setting at the bottom of the menu. You have to select the axes first, in this case the C axis, and the radial count determine how many points will be used for drawing. Here I'm just holding down the Alt key and using the standard brush to subtract from the surface. To smooth those marks out, just press Shift to use the smooth brush and smooth the surface. To make the edges more sharp, you can use the Polish button. As you can see, when the Polish button is active, the Dynamesh algorithm will build up geometry to support better the edges, and as a result you can see that the edges look very nice and sharp. Polish is good for hard surfaces and not always good for organic ones. Here's another hard surface modeling trick, where you can use the gizmo to slice off the corners, as you can see here. To create a boolean object that will be cut into another object, create the cylinder cutter object, scale it and rotate it into place. On the cutter object you will also have to select subtract mode and merge it with the object that you want to merge it with, merging down from the main object. Then select Dynamesh if it's not still active, and once you draw out with control and left drag, the cutter object will be cut out of the main object, as you can see here. The Bend modifier is available from the gizmo, and is visible if you select either Move, Scale, or Rotate. Once you click Accept, the modifier will be applied. You can select Roll Back to before the Bend modifier by clicking Reset. You can also create hard surfaces with a combination of Split Masked, deleting the new Split subtool, then Dynamesh to close the resulting holes. To run Dynamesh, you click Control and at the same time hold and drag with the left mouse button. Instead of using the Polish button, sometimes it gives better results to use the Gizmo Clip technique. You might have noticed the Project button enabled. If you have fine details that you do not want to get smoothed out, you can use this option. If you hold the control button while moving an object, you can create more instances of the same object. Once you release the control button and still holding the left mouse button, the object will be placed. You can now drag new instances the same distance as the first one as shown here. The new objects are all part of the same subtool. You can now use the gizmo to adjust the angle if you want to place new instances of the whole subtool. In draw mode, hold Ctrl and Shift for lasso tool, then click on edges to hide them. Hold Ctrl and click outside to mask the whole model except the mask part. Then hold Ctrl, Shift and left click outside to reverse mask. You can use this as a way to extrude geometry if you already made the geometry have good edge flow. You can remesh to create better edge flow with instant meshes, as I will cover later in this video. Control click on model and outside model to blur mask in both directions so the mask gets a very soft transition. From the gizmo, if you select an object such as Ring 3D on an already inserted subtool, you will get access to some tools that will let you control how the object looks. With the handles, you can control how many vertical and horizontal polygons the object has, and many other visual properties, as you can see here. With the deformers, you can change the subtools to create some interesting effects.
ZBrush Core does not have a tube brush, but you can use C-Spheres as an alternative. Instant Meshes is a remesh tool that you can use to remesh your objects to create better topology that you can use for further sculpting on your model. It has functions to redirect edge flows so that you can create edges flowing in the direction you want. Examples on a face would be circular edges flowing around the eyes and mouth. Blender is a free modeling software and really good for hard surface modeling. If you have any models that need any hard surface modeling, even if you have the big ZBrush version, it's a very good tool for that purpose. In my opinion, it's even better than ZBrush on hard surface modeling and a good alternative to CModeler. ZBrush Core does not have UV unwrapping features, but you can use Blender's manual and automatic UV unwrapping tools instead. ZBrush Core has a good decimation tool for reducing polygon count. This is to both reduce render times and make it faster to work with the model in different software. In this example, the model goes from 2.9 million points to 150,000 points and does not really lose much detail. Also note that the polypane is kept even after decimation. Here you can see the density of the model in red before decimation and blue after decimation. After you have decimated the model, you can bring it directly into Blender for rendering. But you can also bring it into Blender without decimation if your computer can handle it. In this section, I want to cover a couple of ways to isolate parts of the model and also create new subtools from masks. If you have a subtool with polygroups, you can select each polygroup and therefore isolate parts of the subtool by shift and control clicking on the part you want to show while in draw mode. If you use the gizmo and then control click on a polygroup, it will mask just the selected polygroup. When the polygroup part is selected, you can move, scale, or otherwise work on that part without affecting other parts of the subtool. If you make a selection, you can split the masked part into its own subtool by first masking it, then clicking the Split Mask Points button under Subtool. The Gizmo has a Transpose All button, which lets you work on several different subtools at the same time. This can be useful, for example, if you're posing a character or need to move several objects at the same time. A lot of people wonder if 20 million polygons per subtool in ZBrush Core is enough. The model that you see here of Samuel L. Jackson is around 8 million polygons. So as you can see, you can get a lot of details even into 8 million polygons. If you have sculpted your model in ZBrush Core, retopologized it, then UV unwrapped it, why not use Substance Painter to texture it? It's an amazing software for texturing. At the end here, I just wanted you to see a couple of Blender sculpt brushes that can be very useful even if you use the full version of ZBrush. The brushes are Post Brush and Cloth Brush. The Post Brush is of course used for posing characters. The Cloth Brush is super useful for making clothing. It is running cloth simulation while you draw.